on the PowerPoint, it just says property. Okay, yeah. So, yes, today we're doing the properties of quadratics, but the transformations and their properties of quadratics. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. So, if you would label your notes and make sure you are taking notes because you're not going to memorize any of this. Um, transformations is what you would label this or title this. I can title it anything. But basically, it's about transformation, so. Okay, so what we're doing today is we're looking at the parent function of a quadratic and how we, when we manipulate the equation, it transforms from the parent function of the quadratic. Hey Noah, so the first thing is understanding what the parent function is, what the parent function of a quadratic is. So y equals x squared, this is called the parent function of the quadratic. This is like, basically like if you think of it as a shell, this is like the skeleton of a quadratic, okay? And we compare all quadratics to this. And when I'm saying quadratic, this is what I mean. If I was looking at a graph, a parabola, a parabola, is the parent, this is the parent function, what it kind of will look like. This is obviously a very rough sketch and not exactly accurate. But some things to note is the parent function, the um, origin is the X and Y intercept. So it would hit and go through the origin. The axis of symmetry would be the Y axis itself, which would cut the parabola in half. And remember, the axis of symmetry basically just is like the middle of the parabola. So like if this point was two away, this point over here would also be two away, okay? So it's just um, a line that splits the parabola down the middle. So what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate this equation and see when we add certain numbers or put certain numbers in certain places, what it will do to our quadratic equation, okay? Okay. It's fairly simple as long as you're paying attention. Okay, this right here is just a list of everything we've learned so far about quadratics, okay? So if you need it, you know, just uh, looking at it, if, you don't, if you're looking at it and scanning it real quick and you're like, I don't know what this is, then you probably should show up to to Tutoring. Yes? Can we join that? I did too. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, that is, yes, join the near pod. Yeah. I have every B day. I mean, it's a different. It's a different subject every B day. Okay. So this right here. Does anybody remember what form this is called? The vertex form. What we're going to do is we're going to manipulate the A, H, and K and see how it transforms our graph. So what I would do at the top of my paper is write down y equals a, x minus h squared, plus k. And what we're going to talk about is a, h, and k, and what it does when I put certain numbers there, what it, how it affects my graph compared to the parent function, compared to the parent function, okay? All right, so let's get started. All right, we're gonna skip this slide. Okay, so here's my parent function, like I said before. One thing to notice, the origin is the X and Y intercept, the axis of symmetry would split this in half, okay? So what you're gonna notice is when we do do some stuff to this, it's gonna move either to the left, right, up, down, get skinnier, get fatter, it's so many different things are gonna happen to this graph. Um, okay, well, let's talk, what's the domain of this graph? What would the domain be? Pretend there's arrows right here. Yes, X is all real numbers. And what would the range be? What would the range be if zero, zero is the minimum or the vertex?
Uh, I don't know. I, I couldn't follow. But it, yes, you have the right number. So I can just say y is greater than or equal to zero because everything greater than or equal to zero because since zero is the lowest point, it's everything greater than or equal to this. Okay. All right. If you do not understand domain and range, you need to be at two to a ring. All right, moving on. So this is like a, if I was doing notes at the top where I wrote y equals ax minus a squared plus k, I would just quickly write in these things. So what we're going to see is a, a will tell us if our quadratic gets narrow or wider. A will tell us if our quadratic gets narrow or wider. H tells us if we're moving left or right. H tells us if we're moving left or right. You'll see. I'll show you. Don't worry. I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain more in depth each one. K will tell me if I'm going up or down. So what we're going to do is going to go through each letter and talk about how it manipulates the graph, and we're going to look at different graphs. So A will tell us if it gets narrow or wider, H, left or right, K, up and down. So let's start with the letter A. A. Okay. So all these facts are important facts, but instead of just quickly writing them down, try to listen to me as I'm speaking about them. So A is greater than zero. If my A is positive, if my A is positive, and you've already actually went through this last week, our graph, our parabola opens up, meaning it faces up. So think about it as a smiley face. If my A is positive, my graph opens up, meaning it's up, uh, right side up. If my A is positive, my graph is opening up. So basically giving me a smiley face. If my A is negative, A is less than zero. If my A is negative, my graph will open down. My graph will open down, facing down, facing down. Sad face, sad face. These are two facts that we talked about last week that I would ask you, okay, is this facing up or is it facing down? Based on the A value. So if my A is positive, my graph opens up, facing up. If my A is negative, my graph opens down, facing down. If my A value is greater than one, well, first of all, what are these little brackets around here? What are those called? Two lines that was around the number. <laughs> Absolute value brackets. So these are absolute value brackets. So this is saying either positive or negative. If it's greater than one, positive or negative. So it's like negative two, negative three, two, three, any number greater than one, positive or negative, this will make my graph narrower or stretch it, vertical stretch. So if my A value, positive or negative, is greater than one, the number itself, it will make my graph narrower. It's called a vertical stretch. It would stretch my graph, making it skinnier looking. If my A value is between zero and one, positive or negative, 0.5, one, one fourth, uh, three fourths, negative three fourths. If my number is between zero and one, my graph gets wider. It compresses. So like, think of you like squishing the graph. It would get fatter, wider, vertical compression. These are the four facts you need to know about the letter A and what it does to the graph. So if A is positive, opens up. A is negative, opens down. A is greater than one, it stretches. A is between zero and one, it compresses. So let's look at some graphs. All 
All right, so the red line is our parent function. The red line is our parent function. So the red line is y equals x squared. The red line is y equals x squared. The blue line is y equals 2x squared. What do you notice about the graph? The differences. The more it's more narrow. The blue line is more narrow. So it stretches. It got a little bit skinnier. Okay. So it got more narrow. And that's because two, this two, y equals two x squared, this a value is greater than one. And it's opening up. Why is it opening up? Because it's positive. Okay. Since my a value is positive, it's also opening up. Those are two facts to notate. It got stretched because the number is greater than one and it's opening up because it's positive. Pause. Give me questions, please. Give me questions. Give me questions. Okay. All right. Um, okay, any questions? Yeah, of course. Okay, so this blue line, because it's the number is positive, it's facing up, and because the number is greater than one, it's a stretch, a vertical stretch. Uh, you don't have to. I would just, if you, you can, but you don't have to. Yeah, I was like, I know, I was like, looking at it, I was like, uh, <laughs> I know, at first I had a double take, I was like, is she in here? No, okay. All right. All right, so let's look at, what? Uh, um, okay, so the red the red one is the parent function, y equals x squared. And this purple one, or the blue line, is y equals one-third x squared. What do you notice? They're both, positive. they're both positive, so they're facing up. Okay, what else? Okay, and the, pur and the blue and purple line is wider, right? It's got wider. Because it's perfect, because it's a value is between one and zero. Okay, one third. Okay, anyways, cut. So one third is between zero and one. That's why it's compressed. That's why it got wider. Okay, so we always compare everything to this y equals x squared line. So it would be the same as like negative one third, but it would be Yes, great question. So if this said negative one third. It'll be the same exact thing, just facing down. Good question. Great question. Amazing question. Fantastic question. <laughs> All right. So looking at these functions, what can you automatically, what do you know about this black line? It's negative. The A value would be negative. Okay. So it, it looks exactly the same, except it's reflected over the X axis. Right here, the A would be positive, and here the A would be negative. Okay, that's like literally the only facts I need you to know and understand. Ask me questions. No? Anyways, all right. So, next thing we're going to look at. Uh, well, actually, this is just, so this is saying um, what we just did. All of these have the same y-intercept. The only thing that changed when A changed is either it faced up or down or got narrower or wider. <laughs> yeah, so the black one was the negative one. This purple one is the wide one and the orange one and the narrow one. The red one is the parent function, so we always just compare it to that one. Okay, so quickly, I'll, I'm going to hide names. 
explain what's happening with y equals or f of x equals 5.5x squared. Tell me two facts about that graph. You can? Or just knowing, looking at the number, what can you tell me immediately about the graph based on what we just learned? You wrote two facts? So because it's greater than one, Noah, what does it tell you about the graph? I know the number is greater than one. So, okay, and what else? Okay, about 15 more seconds, 15 more seconds. Get that answer in, get that answer in. Hmm. Yes, it would be narrower. Okay, so great. So the people who said it's facing up, ding, 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 because 5.5 is positive, it's facing up. The other thing I was looking for, I know the greater the number is greater than one. I can look at it and see that. What I'm asking is what transformation happened because that number is greater than one. Because it's greater than one, they got narrower. So awesome, ding, 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 if you got both of those facts. Okay, so it got narrower or stretched. And it was facing up because the number was 5.5. Okay, now let's look at H. H, H, the letter H. So remember in vertex form, H is opposite. H is opposite. So if it says X minus H, that means that H value is a positive number, which makes sense that this means if it's X minus H, it's moving to the right. X minus H is moving to the right. And that makes sense because H value, that H value is positive. It's just, remember in vertex form, it's opposite. If it says X plus H, remember that H then is negative and it's telling me it's moving to the left, moving to the left. These two facts, please write them down because you do not have photo memory, okay? So X minus H is telling me my graph is moving to the right. And when I say moving to the right, that means it's no longer on the origin. It's moving to the right. X plus H, that's telling me it's moving to the left because the H value is negative. X minus H to the right. X plus H to the left. Think of it as opposite. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So X minus H moves to the right because the H value is positive. X plus H moves to the left because the H value is negative. Okay. So, oh, look at these three graphs, okay? Y equals X squared is this red one. Okay, it's at the origin. This green one is X plus three squared. X plus three squared. And what do you notice? What point was it at now? At negative three. Is zero is at negative three because this X plus three tells me I'm moving to the left three. And this blue line is X minus three squared. And what do you notice about it's, it's at positive three. It's zero is at positive three, which makes sense because X minus three told me it was going to the right three. Because that H value was at three. This is literally it, but I need questions if you're not understanding, okay? So it's basically understanding the rule and seeing what's happening to the graph because of it, okay? Notice it didn't stretch, it didn't compress, it didn't flip over because the A values were still one. 
But the only thing that changed here were the H values, the H values. Are there really no questions at all? Nothing? Okay. So looking at this equation, f of x equals 0.5 x minus 2 squared. Tell me everything that is happening to this graph in comparison with the parent function y equals x squared. I want three facts. There's three facts I want you to tell me about this graph. Give you 45 seconds. I want three facts. Yes. Wider, W I D E R. D as in dog. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, All right, Alexa, give me one fact. Okay, because A is less than one, it is compressed. Jaden, give me another fact. No, 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 she didn't say that. No, no. Okay, yeah. Um, because the A is in between zero and one. Perfect. It's getting wider because that A value is between zero and one. Leo, give me the last fact. Um, Alexa said that it was. Oh, actually, y'all did say the same thing, didn't y'all? My bad. They both said it was compressed. Okay, my bad. Give me an, just another fact. It moves to the right two times because it's x minus two. And then, can I get the last fact? Yes, babe. It'd be, it says it's positive, it's facing up. Perfect. Okay. All right, last thing that we're learning is the k value. Last thing we're learning is the k value. If my k is positive, it moving, it's moving up. If my k is positive, it's going up. My graph is going in an upward direction, meaning it moves off the origin and would move up the y-axis or move up whatever, the y-value. If my k is negative, it's moving down. Positive k, up. Negative k, down. Positive k, up. Negative k, down. Yeah. Positive K, up. Negative K, down. Questions? Yay, that's what I like to hear. Okay, so look at this graph. Let's make some observations. What this red one is, same thing has been on all of these is the Y equals X squared. So this is our parent function. This green one, what do you notice the Y intercept is? Three, I don't know why she's on here. It's three, okay? And that's because the x, the k value is positive three. This equation is x squared plus three. This represents the k value because the k is positive, it moved up three. This equation, if you notice, 
the well, liner like, stuff. It's not upside down, but it moved down three. See, so my K is negative, so it went down three. Went down three. Notice it didn't compress or get narrower. They all have the same figure. It just moved up and down because of the K value. No questions at all? Okay. All right. Look at this. Oops, what did I just do? All right. Look at this equation. I want you to name every fact there is based on the equation. There are four facts I want you to list. I'll give you a minute. Take your time. I know it's easy, but take your time. Hey, Samara, I'm not sure if you hear me, babe, but we, I don't have any tutoring this morning. I have a class on A-Days. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Leo, positive energy, please, my dude. Positive energy. <laughs> S and H. Yep, four facts. I need four facts. Four facts, four facts, four facts, four facts. Aaliyah, give me one. Great. Just kidding. Aaliyah, can you give me one? Um, um, I just really can't. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just really can't. What does that even? What does that mean, Elia? I just, I just won't be able to give you one. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Jada, can you give me a fact? No, Jada. I'm sure you can. No, Jada, can you give me a fact? Jada Taylor. Hi, Miss Levis. Is Jada Taylor there? Could you tell her to answer the Zoom question? <laughs> um, okay, I guess. All right, thank you, Miss Levisy. <laughs> she says she can't unmute. Anyways, no, give me a fact. <laughs> The line is going to be, what do you mean by positive? Okay, it's facing up. The line is going to be, it's going to be facing up because my A value is positive. Thank you. Aaliyah, do you want to give me one now? Medicine. Yes, yeah. Aaliyah. Okay, it's going to move to the left and then it's going to move up. <laughs> Good job, Aaliyah. Good job. Good job. So it's gonna move last three, yes, and go up five. Good job. And then what's the last fact? Can someone give me the last fact? Oh. 
perfect. A is greater than one, so it gets narrower. Y'all are funny. Okay. So what I want you to do is write an equation based on these attributes, okay? So I will do the first one for you so you understand what I'm saying. Okay, okay. If I wanted to stretch two units, stretch, stretch. I know stretch is my A value. So I know this is talking about A, so I know my A is gonna be two. But if I want to reflect across the X axis, that means I want it to face down. So I know my A is gonna be negative two. So I know my equation for number one would be. <laughs> so I know my equation is gonna be negative two X squared because my A value would have to be negative since it's reflected across the X axis. And it's gonna to have to be two because it got stretched too. So this would be my equation. Notice I didn't put the H or the K because it didn't say it moved to the left or the right. So that means it would be zero, zero. So I don't need to put the H and the K. So this would be my equation for number one. That's it. So do number two and then we'll pause and I'll ask someone to volunteer. And you know what, Zoomies? Just put it in the chat for me. Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat for me. Put it in the chat. Oh yeah, I shake my head. Yes, sorry. I should have said it verbally. Yes, yes. No, you didn't have to do that. You're good. Right. Y'all are so funny. Okay. 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 Dummy. Yes, I don't got it. I'm not. Oh my gosh. The disrespect. <laughs> okay, if I stretch three units, Justin, what letter is that talking about? A, H, or K? A. A. So I know my A is going to be three. If I move three units to the left, which variable is that, Leo? H. And is that positive or negative? Positive. Perfect. So I know this is good. So move three units to the left, that'll be positive three for my H. For my H. So my equation should look like y equals three x plus three squared. So we wouldn't have to put the No, since there was no, since it didn't say up or down, I don't have to put anything for k. Yeah. Okay, do three, do three. Yeah, yeah, dude, you're doing it on your own right now. Oh, you already did it? Yeah, oh, you already did it? Oh, my be. My bad. Okay. If y'all already did it, let's keep going. All right, babe. Go ahead. Just give me the whole thing. Oh, other people didn't do it? Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Pause, pause, pause. Let other people do it. My bad. My bad. My bad. <laughs> okay, may babe go? Yeah. All right, go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So you see how I'm taking my time and Babe was taking time to label and say what each value was before just giving me the whole equation. So y equals 0.5 times 
x minus two squared. I should have put h is negative two. Yeah, I like uh, yeah, be minus two. Okay, and then plus three. Perfect. 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 Okay. Um, okay. So let's consider this our exit ticket. If we get 100%, then I know we got it. If we don't get 100%, then I might need to keep talking. We do. All right, I'm gonna give you 30 seconds. Which transformation is compressed by a scale factor of one half, moves three left and two down? Compress based on y equals one half of minus one. No, shut up. Oh, no, I'm not kidding. Speaking out loud. Oh, I actually did it. Ha! Got it before Alexis. Alexa. Alexa. Let's go. I'm so done with the other day. Wow. So does. Too smart. Too smart means literally. Yes. No, you are literally too smart. Yes. I did that in my head, man. I didn't even have to label either. <laughs> you technically did because you were saying it out loud. Mmm. That looks rich. That is rich. 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 Oh, there we, oh, there we go. So compressed, there's our A, moves left, there's our H, but it'd be plus three, and it moves down two, so minus the K would be minus two. Yeah. Good. All right. One last one. Oh, you said that was the last one. Oh, I guess I did it. All right. <laughs> Reflected across the X axis, meaning it's facing down, four right and two down. Y'all, you know what I like about y'all? Y'all yeah, real. Y'all keep it 100. Like, y'all don't, I don't care how, you, I'm gonna tell you straight up. All right. Hello, hi. hi. Hello. What's up? Uh... Here's your ration. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Dang, wait a minute. What the? Oh, yeah, yeah.